Can you explain the difference between tunneled and versus non-tunneled and centrally inserted versus peripherally inserted porticaths? Well, I sure can. So I went ahead and uh, uh, divided it up into central venous catheters, okay? So that's what we're really talking about. And the question uh, ends up being, you know, what's the difference between tunneled and non-tunneled? Ultimately, when um, you, and the keywords you're looking for is how long will the person have the cath? Okay, so a cath is anything that is a, you know, uh, put in to the body to to let things in or let things out, right? Um, it doesn't have to be in a vessel because we have urinary catheters, right? Uh, but for the most part, we're talking about venous catheters here. Tunneled catheters are intended to stay for longer periods of time. They go under the skin and they have a separate exit point. That's how you know it's tunneled. Um, they can have more than one lumen. Now, when you talk about a lumen, that's a lumen just means that it's a tube. So we have lumens in our body. It's just a tube aspect of the anatomy. But I've got some pictures here for you to see. And uh, uh, the lumen, uh, that they're talking about is going to have probably, oh, if they has two, it'll have like little two little plastic uh, uh, apparatuses that come out and then you can inject things into them separately. So common names, uh, some of the top tunneled uh, venous catheters are going to be a Hickman. Uh, this is they will look for Hickman, but there's called a power Hickman. And then there's a multi-lumen Hickman. Um, also, you could have seen uh, a, called a Broviac long-term dialysis catheter. Um, a Groshang, and I used to call it a Groshang, but it's called a Groshang, and I may not even be pronouncing it right uh, in then, but to me, I was called it a gross shang and everybody just rolled their eyes at me when I was in the hospital. Uh, then there's another one called a Neostar and I don't know that one as well, but usually it was a Hickman or a gross shang that um, went in. Now there's other types of tunneled ports. Now these are ports that are implanted and for the most part it's usually part, somebody that has more of a chronic or long-term uh, illness that's going to be treated. Definitely, if you're going to be getting chemotherapy because of cancer uh, or um, something like that, they'll put a port in because you know you're going to be going in frequently to have blood draws done and they need to get medicine in you. And this actually makes it more stable for a vein. So uh, this is a port that goes under the skin, again, long-term therapy, and it can also have one or um, uh, more lumens, those little tubes that come um, that you would use, but for the most part, you see them with one. Uh, the the big ones are called power point, uh, excuse me, power port, um, titanium dome port, and there's a slim port that is also used. Now let's look at a, a picture of those. I think oh no, nope, must have it down at the bottom. You know what? I don't think I added the pictures because they were copy written. That's what it was. I don't think I did. So what you need to do is go out and Google image um, central venous catheters. Yeah. So I was looking at all these. And I'm like, oh, oh, and I couldn't find one that, that I could get permission to use. Uh, another type is a dialysis catheter. Uh, this is going to be uh, tunneled. It's going to go uh, usually into the superior vena cava. They can do an arterial venous fistula a lot of the times that are uh, used and these are called a hemosplit and these are long-term dialysis catheters because again people that are doing dialysis are doing at least two times a week right uh, now non-tunneled these are short-term usually with non-tunneled you're going to see them done um, a lot of times in the ER um, the one that I saw done that, wow, it was uh, impressive to watch him do it. It was a really difficult job, but we had a woman in the ER that had had a, a 
a motor vehicle accident. She rolled her car. She didn't have her safety belt on and quite honestly broke almost every bone, the doctor said. Um, but so her arms, which would normally look at the length of your arm and her arms were just down to her elbow because she had like shattered her, her, both of her arms. And so it has shortened the arm. So they were wanting to put in a, um, you know, a, a, a cath a, and uh, they had to do a cut down and get into the subclavian artery and they had an awful time trying to get that done, but it's non-tunneled, short term. They just had to stabilize her enough so they could get her on the helicopter and take her out to the university um, because of the condition that she was in. Uh, one of these is, uh, there's all kinds of names for them, but the, um, the resources I was using, this elite dialysis catheter called, and I think this is called, a, I'm not probably going to say this right, Maherkar, Mahar, Mah, I don't know where to put the emphasis on it, but that's a type of uh, uh, temporary dialysis catheter that's done. They can do the subclavian, like I got to see, which was a central venous catheter, and it had like you know, a dozen, well, there wasn't a dozen, but they had, you know, like four or five ports or lumens sticking off of it, and they were all color-coded, so because they were going to have to put in multiple IV bags and so on and so forth. Uh, so these would be central venous catheters. You might see them abbreviated as a CVAD, um, and then uh, the types. The types that you're going to see on these non-tunneled, of course, we've got uh, the documentation, especially in the nurse's notes, you're going to see single lumen, which would be an SL. You might have a double lumen, so they'd have two appendages off of it, DL, and then a triple lumen, which would be TL. So again, it would say like um, you would see documentation that said CVC SL, right? Then you knew it was a single lumen central venous catheter that was put in. And again, these are temporary, unlike tunneled which are meant to be long term especially with the type if you're going to be having chemo you'll wear those for years and I think 12 years was the limit on those and sometimes they don't want you to take them out because if you have a reoccurrence of your catheter they have to go in and do them again and they're not they're put in surgically um, uh, not just you know like this one, non-tunneled are usually done in the ER uh, type atmosphere. It's done quickly uh, with just, you know, general anesthesia, whereas the others, diff more anesthesia. There's also a, a quadruple lumen, but I didn't have an abbreviation with that one. So some other documentation that you're going to see when dealing with these types of caths, uh, with non-tunneled caths, okay, uh, they are temporary, and it doesn't matter if it's a multi-lumen uh, percutaneous or, or not, but this documentation is going to give you a heads up that um, we've got um, tunneled versus non-tunneled, stuff like that. So they have to be flushed. We have to use heparin to keep these um, caths open. Uh, you know, if you ever get medication via an IV, uh, if you've ever noticed, the nurse will go in and give you an injection, and it's heparin, and then they'll, uh, a lot of times then they'll give you whatever medication they're supposed to give you, and sometimes they'll flush it afterwards again with heparin. Um, uh, but they'll come in and, and they'll say, I'm going to clean out your IV, and they'll give you that flush of heparin, uh, and, and ultimately heparin is just a blood thinner, so you don't uh, uh, clog up your IV. And the documentation, you really don't necessarily need to know the difference between how much heparin a person gets if they're an adult or a toddler or stuff, but I went ahead and added that. Uh, so if we do uh, a heparin flush, uh, then we know that they're going to give them heparin every 24 hours, okay? And um, also that uh, uh, for intermediate, or intermittent use, then um, there's uh, like just going in and getting drawing blood because if you have one of these in, they can pull the blood directly from those, um, depending on what what they've got um, plugged into you. Then again, uh, 
uh, pediatric and toddlers and neonates all have a different uh, flush time. But this is the documentation that you're going to be looking for when you're determining something is tunneled and non-tunneled. So you noticed every 24 hours they're flushing, whereas if you have a port, a tunneled, it's not going to get that that flush as often. Now, before they um, you go in and have your chemo, uh, for example, they'll they'll give they may give you uh, some type of a flush, but it's not for um, uh, it's not an every 24 hours thing, right? Because you may only go in every uh, three weeks, once every three weeks to to have your um, uh, treatment. But even after you have, are done with your treatment and say they're not going to take out that tunneled port, um, then again you still have to go in every so often and have that flushed and cleaned out because we're in the vascular system. So that's the difference between the um, tunneled and the non-tunneled and uh, when it's uh, centrally inserted versus peripherally inserted and peripherally meaning we're looking at more things like um, I, IV catheters, not something that is put inside the vascular system. It's good stuff. Documentation really goes a long way. Uh, and this is another reason why clinicians make such excellent coders is because they know all of this stuff, right? They, they know what's going on behind the scenes. Do you need more medical certification and business training? Learn more at www.cco.us.